is going to go in the middle of the table. You're going to decide which ones you push and which ones you pull. When I put out the activity boxes of fun things, I am moving from a general discussion on energy towards focusing on forces, these forces being named as pushes and pulls. with the things that we pull to you. Rebecca, can you tell me one thing that you push to move? Can you pick one thing out and can you show me how you're going to push that? Good girl, you pushed it to turn it on. What about from the pull pile? Are we anything up there that we can pull? <coughs> William, can you show me something? And you're going to look at that. And when you pull it out, it makes the spinning top move, doesn't it? Rebecca, one more thing from the pushing pile, I think. Up here, Rebecca, can you find something else? Very good. And you're going to push that along. Excellent. We looked this morning at all the things we can push and pull. Can you think of another way to move an object. What if you had a toy boat? How are you going to be able to move that? Sarah? Engine or a sails. An engine, Sarah. How would you, how would an engine work? With oil. With, you put the oil into the engine, the petrol into the engine, good girl. But what if you didn't have an engine? You had another idea, Sarah, good girl. Sails. A sail. And how is our sail going to work? Rebecca, have you an idea? With the wind. The wind is going to push the sail. Very good. I want you to look up here. I have a basin of water and I am going to float my boat in the basin. And it's going to sail on the basin, but it's not moving at the moment. It's just staying still. And Sarah is going to come up here and she is going to see, can she make the boat move for me? So how are you going to do that, Sarah? Good girl, have a go. Very good. Who can think of an idea to make the boat move even faster across the water? I know. You might know, Cormac. A sail on the boat. A sail on the boat. The last time, my boat didn't move very fast, and I want to see if it's going to move faster this time with a sail on it. Ready, Robert? Yeah. Ready now? One, two, three. Oh, that went super fast. What kind of things are we going to need to make our boats go on land? If you put on the wheels, it'll uh, make it move. And if you open the window, it'll bring in some wind. And the wind will make the sail move. It will. Excellent. But I have a big problem here that you're going to have to solve for me because I can't get my wheels to stay on. How am I going to fix the wheels onto the boat? Any ideas? Think, Kevin, you might know. An axle. A long bar to hold the wheels on that can make it turn and all. I'm going to give a box to everybody and I want you just to have a look inside and see what's there and to think which pieces could I use to make my boat. The next set of boxes I'm putting out contain materials which are going to be used in making the land yacht. But before they start the practical work, I'd like to give them an opportunity to explore the materials and decide what they're going to use.
and this part, boys and girls, I am going to get you to draw a picture for me of what you think your boat is going to look like in the end. Wonderful. That's going to be for you. Oh, that's going to go into the box. And what's going to go up high to hold up the sail at the top? Um, what might you use for the box? I might use a little bit of sellotape. tape. What's it going to stick on to? It's going to stick on to the sail. And how, but is it going to just stand up like that on its own? No, it's going to bend over and I'm going to stick the cellar tape onto the pole. And how is the boat going to move, Sarah? How are we going to move even faster? Wind. Wind. And what's the wind going to push on? Um, what did you draw up here? A sail. A sail. Very good. And what's going to hold up the sail? And the stick. think this might work as an axle? Why, why wouldn't that work, William? It's too small. It's too small. I can't turn around and it's too round. It is. It's round. 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 Oh, wow. Look what you've done. What are you trying to do now, Anne? I'm trying to stick the stick into the It's a lid staying on for you. And you're trying to put the stick through. Can you push it through? going to find a different colored card and on their card they're going to find lots of instructions to read so off we go take turns to push your vehicle over the carpet is the carpet rough or smooth can the vehicle go fast or slow take turns to push your vehicle over the map is the map didn't you? What did you learn with using the hairdryer? What did you learn, William? 
If you push it on number two, it goes very fast. And number two, what do you mean by that? What kind of a wind is that? That's a, a strong a wind. Str and it goes very fast. Did you learn something today, Sarah? Um, on, when you put it down to one, it, um, it didn't go very fast. And what kind of a wind was number one? Um, it was a little wind. A very gentle wind. Yeah. And push it for me. Did it go fast or slowly? Fast. Fast. It goes very fast with a light load. Adam, I might get you to try. What kind of a load do you have on at the moment? Heavy. A heavy load. Will you try the heavy load for me? Does it go fast or slowly, slowly. Adam? Slowly. Rachel, what happens if you use the mat, which is the carpet, which is a little bit rough? Does it go fast or slowly? Slowly. Slowly. And which one did you prefer using? The mat. The mat. Why did you prefer using the mat? Um, it was smoother it, and it was easier to roll. It was easier to roll on the mat. That's excellent. Well done. You did great work. Yeah. Okay. Was that okay? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Tell me, Sinead, why wasn't it okay? Because you didn't have it on the same level when you choose them on the ground. Is this the same level? Yeah. Am I all right? Yeah. Okay. Now I'll do them, I'll do this fellow first and I'll do this fellow second. Now you must check, see, was it fair? No, no, no. Hands up, why wasn't that fair? Or was it fair? I don't know. Keith? Because you were just throwing it around hard and you just dropped the other one down. Okay. See all the things I had to keep the same? Would we go back over them? I had to keep the level. The level. What else had I had to keep the same? The four. But what thing is different? Size, 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 and the material that's made. Right. And what's that? Right. So the only thing that was different is the what? Balls. Balls. Oh, yeah. And the first activity the children are working on here is concerned with forces. They're working with um, cars and balls, sliding them down the ramp. The children are working their own class groupings because we have third to sixth class in this room. There's on average about five children in each class and I find it handier to allow them work at their own level for this particular activity. The children are beginning here exploring the materials. They're allowing the ball and the cars to slide down the ramp. Hang on, put the marble into the vessel. Put this one there, Dave. And then ball. Off here, Dave. Dave, you're on camera. What could investigation could we come up with? Um, if you roll the, the car and the marble and see what gets there faster. Okay. Colum? And to see if a circular thing can go faster than a car with wheels. Round with three, did you come up with any investigations? What um, size marble will roll the fastest? What will make this go further? If you put this further off. What did you say, right? If you put this further off. Okay. <laughs> now, I wonder, is that smooth table, is it helping the ball to travel faster, further, or is it slowing the ball down? It's helping it it's faster, faster because if that was in the way, um, it would just stop. Now, look at the carpet. Do you think the carpet would help no, the ball? No, because there's loads of hairs and it's like bumps. <laughs> So I'm going to go back to the question I asked you at the beginning. How can we make the ball travel further? Katrina? A smooth surface. Pardon? A smooth surface. Now I wonder if I was making it travel on the carpet. We'd say if I had one of these and I left it drop like that on the carpet, right? And then if I did the same thing on the tiles, in which example would the ball travel further? It will travel further on the tiles because it's a smooth surface. And Mike? It won't travel faster in the tiles because um, don't the shapes of the tiles is it, to slow down between the... the, oh, the, the grooves? Mini yeah. Okay, that's fine. Each group is going to pick one of the five things from the blackboard. And you're going to investigate and find out how changing it will get the ball to travel further. For example, the first one, the height of the slope. I'm going to pretend that my group is going to take the first one, height of the slope. And I'm going to see if I put it here, 
How far will the ball travel? If I put it a little higher, how far will the ball travel? Or if I put it higher again, how far will the ball travel? And at which height did the ball travel the furthest? What else am I keeping the scene? Katrina? The surface that it lands on. Oh, good idea. Imagine if I did it on the table one time and on the carpet the next time. Would that be fair? No. How am I going to measure how far the ball has travelled? Um, a measuring tape. You could put the measuring tape at the bottom of the slope and you could put it over to the wall and then you could, and it would be rolling along and then when it comes back you could you could add up to how long it went. Okay. Any other way of measuring how far the ball has travelled? Katrina? Um, if you leave them both down together and then um, in an open space then you'll see how long it travelled. Okay. And I want you to decide which one of those you're going to do. And when you've decided then we'll begin, okay? So have a little chat. Which one? Mm -hmm. I wonder will that go very far. Show me your second height now. I wonder will that go very far? And show me your third one. Wow, that's really high. Changing the surface, right? What three surfaces have you chosen? Grass, concrete, and steps. Will you go and try them? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, five and a half. <laughs> Our problem ground surface, what are we keeping the same force, height and length? What are we changing the surface of uh, what the What three surfaces did you choose, Katrina? Um, grass and concrete. Okay. How did you keep the height the same? When Anna was measuring it the first time, she kept it up to her hip and then she just measured it that way. Okay. How did you measure it? I um, measured it by feet. But whose feet? Mine. Would it have been a good idea if I stepped in there and used my feet instead of yours the second time? No. Why not? Because it wouldn't be the same measurement. Okay. Uh, who was responsible for leaving the ball go? Colin was. Okay, Colin, can you tell us what you did each time? I just left it go like that. Did you push it any time? No. Do you think you kept it fair? Yep. Okay. Um, which result was the best, the grass or the concrete? The concrete. Why do you think so? Um, because it was more smoother than the grass. Now what we're going to do, we're going to leave all of you walk up slowly and we're not going to take anything, we're just going to look at the materials and we're going to think, hmm, what would I pick from there now if I had the chance to make something which would help my little elephant fall more slowly to the ground. Now what would happen when I leave my hands go? Could I try? Yeah. You try for me, Keith? Yeah. Stand up in your chair and have a go. See what you fall. <laughs> the poor fellow. He got an awful doing. How can we make him fall a little slower? A parachute. Sorry, Vin? A parachute. Okay. Okay, Vin? Tie a card onto him and put a plastic bag or something over him. And how would, what would that do? The air would go into the plastic bag and it would go slower down. Okay. Keith, have you something else that come down the window? Uh, he, could, he could get the card over his head and then he could put it around something and you could drop him there and he could, the thing would be turning around slowly while he'd be lying down. How would I make sure that my elephant is balanced? What will I choose from the table? We could um, get the sticks and put them all together like wings or something and then get the bubble stuff or else um, get the cloth. There was plastic bags up there. Yeah, there's plastic bags. Yeah, so more air, so more air is going to go into because it's lighter in there. You, know. you must have a little chat with everybody on the table 
and come up with one design per table that everybody is happy with. Thanks, one, one at a time. We are now working using mixed groups at each table. There's a child from third, from fourth, from fifth and from sixth working in each group. We are focusing on materials, designing and making a parachute, but obviously we will overlap with elements of forces. You try your bit of paper now, see does that go any slower? Go on, leave him go anyway, we'll have a check. Do you want to stand up and test it, Katrina? Um, Louise is doing that. Louise, we'll get him. Stand up in the chair like we're calling so we'll see. Good girl, come on, stand up, boy. Hand up. Are you happy with it? Okay, let's see what happens. Up. <laughs> We're going to keep the elephant in here so that he'll have a soft landing when he goes down. And then we'll have we'll have some strings here and here and here so the parachute so you catch there and you've got our gently. Okay, well done. Now what we're going to do, we're going to have one test run. I want Katrina, Colum, Keith and Anna just to test it for one go. I'm going to come along with an elephant of the same size and I'm going to let him go along beside your fellow. And I want to see, does your fellow have a slower journey to the ground? Are we happy? Right, let's see now. Did he fall out? He's sick, of, he's sick of the crack, put him in there. Now I want you, I'm going to go beside you now, Katrina, and I'm going to see which elephant has a nicer journey or a slower journey to the ground. Right, put him up a bit higher, about this high. Will, will we leave them go at the same time? Yeah. Are they at the same height? Yeah. Are we fair? Yeah. Right, one, two, three, go. Who's got a slower journey? Katrina. Well done, Katrina. Well done, that group. You did what you were supposed to do. He got a slower journey. Keep that now, that's very good. Can anybody tell me anything that they've learned? We'll be asking the party. Anything they've learned this afternoon in relation to the parachutes? Keith? The flow feels light, but it's heavy when, uh, when you stick it onto the, your plane thingy. Into your plane, into your parachute. Okay, would you choose it again the next time? No. Don't put too much glue tack because um, then it makes it too heavy and it won't go down. It'll go down, really, it'll go down really fast. Ryan? Um, the more the bigger bag you have, the more, cha the more chance it has of floating in the air. Why so? Because the, the bigger the bag, the, the more air that will come into the bag. Okay. So what would you do differently? Um, use cloth instead of the plastic. Why so? Um, because it's takes air in kind of the same as a plastic bag. Okay, Ryan? I try um, a kind of a motion fan for inside the balloon, stick it to the balloon so the air will still be inside. Okay. To keep it floating. And how would you make that? Hmm? How would you make that? Circuit from a battery. When we were testing the parachutes, every time we did it, because was it the elephant without the parachute or the elephant with the parachute, which hit the ground first? The, the elephant without the parachute because the elephant with the parachute had air coming through the um, the bag so it would land slower. Was that a fair test? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What things did I keep the same when I was testing my elephant with the parachute beside my elephant without a parachute? Celine, what things did I keep the same? You kept the level the same. Good girl. The height. The height and distance from the f distance from the floor. Anybody else? Anything else? Have we them all covered? How about this? Did I push one and leave the other drop? No. no. What did I do? You um, just dropped it and the 
the same as the parachute. Okay. So was my test fair? Yeah. yeah. Okay, boys and girls, do you remember when we went out on our mini beast hunt last January? Do you remember the things we found? Yeah. Can anybody remember what they found? Des, what did you find? Um, a black beetle. A black beetle? Yeah. What did you find, Natalie? A worm. A worm. And Stephanie? I found a worm. Two worms. Yeah. Dear, there was something unusual about your spider, wasn't there? It was missing a leg. And how many legs did it have? Seven. How many should it have had? Eight. Good girl. That was in January, and remember it was a really cold day when we went out. Yeah. What month are we in now? June. June. Do you think there'd be any difference in the creatures we'd find today if we went outside? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think there'd be a difference, David? Like, because all, all the rain that's just fallen into the lake and they might soak some rain out of the ground or eat all the things in the boat. That's like right. And that's right, Dave. Yeah. So the ground would be a good bit wetter. Yeah. Amanda, anything yeah. else? Um, when the sun shines, the ground would be um, hotter. The ground would be hotter. Do you think that would make a difference? Yeah. Probably. Why do you think that might make a difference? Because some insects might like hot ground. Would there be anything else out there today that we wouldn't have found in January? Kieran? Uh, maybe a butterfly. Maybe a butterfly, yes. There were no butterflies in January. Anything else? Fly. Owen? Flies. Flies. There would have been no flies around in January, yes. Des? Um, a wasp or a bee. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to get you to use your memories now and I'm going to get you to use your imagination as well and I want you to draw pictures for me of the things we might find outside today. Amanda, you have a ladybird in yours. What else are you going to put into your picture? Um, butterfly. Anything else, do you think? Um, a wasp. Okay. Dave, but you were telling us about the bug viewer. Just remind everybody again how we use the bug viewer, just in case anybody's forgotten. Uh, yeah, okay. You have your glove on first, and then for safety, and then you get a sheet of paper gently and get the mini beast onto it, and then just easily put them in. Then you can go and look, ma magnify them, and look like uh, search them. And Okay, and remember there was something about the lid of the bug viewer, and there were two ways of putting it on. Oh, remember that? You could only put it on one way because the other way doesn't work. Okay. And um, David mentioned something about gloves as well. Amanda, why do we need to wear gloves outside? Um, for protection. Who are we protecting? The animals. And? Our, our hands. And our hands as well. Can I get you to take the temperature as well for me? Just leave the thermometer and remember to bring it in with you afterwards and we'll read it. Uh, there's a little fly in there. It's oh, he's tiny. Yeah. He's really small. Where did you find him? Down down the leaves. Well, we need to get the magnifying glass to look at him, won't we? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to get another bug viewer? Find a second one? Yes, please. Go ahead. Des, what have you got? A uh, worm. Another worm. Where did you find him? Uh, down there in the ground. Was he far under the ground or was he on the surface? No, he was just on the surface. Some creatures or insects only come out at night. Like oh, they're there. the ones you yeah. want to catch, are they? Yeah, well, yeah. Like beetles and that. Okay, anything else you think might be in it in the morning? Uh, Beetles. Spiders. You might get some spiders. Oh, the flies will just fly out if you could. That's perfect. So we'll check that in the morning? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kieran, did you take the temperature? I did. What is it? Um, it's 14 degrees. 14 degrees. Okay. Do you remember what the temperature was when we were out in January? Um, it was 8. It was 8 degrees. It was a much colder day then, wasn't it, than today? Yeah. Okay. Well done. You hold on to the thermometer there for us. <coughs> what sort of conditions did you find the creatures living in? Darren? They're living under leaves. Under leaves? Yeah. Okay. What do you call that, that, uh, that stuff that's on the ground where the leaves fall and the seeds fall and they rot down into the ground? David, do you know oh, the name for that? Moulded leaves. Moulded leaves. Good man. And it's the other way around. It's leaf. Moulded. Leaf <laughs> yeah. mould. Good man. And where does all that come from? Owen? Trees. Leaf falling from the trees and the clay mixed in. Okay. And if you know what sort of a tree this is above us here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Amanda? Beech. It's a beech tree. Exactly. That's great. Let's go inside then and have a look at our creatures. 
had a look at them with the magnifying glass. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and draw this one? Yep. Has that one got wings? Yeah. Has, has he been flying in the container, Kieran? Yeah, he's been jumping from the bottom to the top. Nice. And up the walls. Okay. Okay, go ahead and draw. Oh, and what have you got? Any wings? No. Back does just like that. Okay. No, Can you see how many dots. parts? How many parts in the, has he got on his body? Just have a look again with the magnifying glass. Look from underneath there. One, and then the legs come out. Okay. That's fine. Keep drawing. David, what have you got? A uh, centipede. How do you know it's a centipede? Because uh, it's so long and it has uh, 50 legs on each side and it has 100 on it. Did you count 50 legs? Uh, no, but I remember last January Keith counted them when we had a, it was 100 on each, or 50 on each side. Have a look and see what you saw, see him in the book. Does he move very fast or does he move slowly? Uh, when he's small, he moves slow, but then he gets he moves faster when he's when he stretches out. Okay, would you say he's moving quite quickly there now, or is that rather slow? Yeah, uh, fast for his, like for an insect, it's kind of fast. Okay, what's his body like? Remember what is, what what does his body look like? Uh, it's yellow, and the colour is yellow. And, and is he? It's very skinny. He's very okay, long. so he's very skinny. Yeah. And he's long. How long would you say he is? Uh, he's opened out. About. Three centimetres. Okay, he's about two or three centimetres yeah. long. Is he the same? Yeah, the yellow one. Right, what does it say about them? Uh, they live under logs and stones. And where did you find him? Uh, under under a stone. Okay, and that's the centipede there they're talking about. Have you yeah. a millipede or a centipede? I think it's a centipede there. Okay. okay. And, and it mentions a, that they're a carnivorous creature. A carnivorous creature. What's yeah. a carnivorous creature? Uh, do you know? They eat meat only. Oh right. Okay. And uh, the poison, cl poison claws just behind the head. Really? Yeah. In case anything come and attacks them, and to kill their like their food as well, I'd say. Do you remember the investigation we did a few months ago with the wood lice? Yes. yes. Do you remember that? Darren, what did we do? Uh, we did the wet and dry to see whether wood lice preferred wet and dry. And well, how did we set that up, do you remember? Um, we put a day cloth the whole way across the bottom of the box. Right. And we dampened half of it to make it fair, and then we put them in the middle, and we found that they rather did damp. Yes, we did another investigation. Do you remember what that one was? Yeah, it was to see if wood lice per, uh, liked rougher, smooth better. And how do we set that one up? Um, we put J cloud on one side and we put sandpaper on the other side. And what did we do then? We put the wood house in the middle and we see which we saw which way they went. Okay. Was that a fair test? That was the first one we did. Was that a fair test? Um, no. Why was it not fair, do you think? Because they could have just like J cloth rather than sandpaper. Okay, so we were finding out whether wood lice preferred J cloth or sandpaper. Mm. When we do that again, how will we make it a fair test? Um, maybe have sandpaper on one side and the, the other side, uh, sandpaper, which is smooth, put that, turn it over and put it on. How much of the box will we have rough and how much of it will we have smooth? Half and half. Half and half. And how many wood lice did we use, do you remember, the last time? Uh, four. Okay. What did we find the last time? Did they prefer the rough or the smooth, do you uh, remember? The smooth, I think, was. They preferred the smooth. Okay, so we'll try that one again. Uh, with your suggestion this time, where we use all sandpaper, half rough and half smooth, and we'll see what happens then. Okay. So we said they prefer to be in smooth places, they prefer to be in, Diren found they prefer to be in damp places in her investigation. And remember the conditions we found the creatures in outside? Yeah. yeah. What sort of conditions were they living in, Owen? Uh, damp sort of conditions and uh, dark. Damp and dark. And why was it so dark again, do you remember? Because the tree was shading the sunlight from getting in. Okay, and most of the creatures were living in that in that the fo the, the the material that had fallen from that tree, David. Do you remember what that was called uh, again? It was molded leaves, leaf mold. Sorry. Leaf mold, good yeah. man. And what was that made up from? Uh, it was like wet leaves coming off the trees when it was after rain, like the drops of that fall 
haunted leaves and Darren, what else did you pick up from among the leaves, do you remember? And there were beach seeds as well. So Some of the old beach seeds that had fallen last year, exactly. Okay. The last thing and the most important thing when we're dealing with mini beasts, Amanda? Um, bring them back exactly where they were. Okay, so now we're going to take our mini beasts out, boys and girls, and leave them out in the field exactly where we found them. Okay? Yeah. Let's go. here ready to start on our adventure looking at the rock pools on the seashore in Shanagari Beach and I just want to remind you of some of the things I told you in the classroom. The first thing is that we have to be so aware of being safe while we're here. Is that okay? So we stick to all the rules because the seashore is a beautiful place but can also be dangerous. Right, can everybody see? Now is everyone listening very carefully? What did, what will I put into the bowl yeah. first? Yeah. Why must I do that? To keep them alive. alive. To keep them alive. Yeah. The creature will die. Yeah, and it's very important to do that, isn't it? And what am I going to do with the sieve? Yeah. 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 See what I can yeah. get. Yeah. When you pick, pick up the creature, you put yeah. your hand on it. Oh, there. good girl, Michael. So you tell them what we have to do. Um, you dip the sieve under and then you put your hand under the sieve because in case the water doesn't... Okay, will you show us how to do that? Lisa? Lisa. Catch one. Catch them. Shh, Sean, catch on, she's grand. Catch a crab. Good girl. And she's, why is she putting her hand underneath? The water will come out if you don't. Well, yeah, but why else is she putting her hand underneath? Because the animals... Yeah, yeah, she has to hold the creature because the creature will jump out. Exactly. Now, you mightn't get anything the first time, but you'll keep trying in different places. So I did there in the water. Could anyone tell me where else can I put the sieve in the pool? You could put it under the seaweed. Good boy. Why would you go under seaweed, do you think? Because the fish would be hiding under. Do you think they'd be hiding there? Oh, and he's right, you know, because I have got something under the seaweed. Well done. Is this going to be too hard for first and second? No. Okay. Somebody else said something about their shadow. I thought that was very clever. Who said about the sh shadow? Sinead. Um, what did you say about the shadow, Sinead? Uh, there's no shadow in the sun now. Yeah, and why must you be careful not to put a shadow? Uh, because the fish, the fish and stuff won't, uh, um, they don't like really dark and uh, they'll run away. What, what would they think would be there if there was a shadow? I know. Uh, a bird. Exactly. The number ones are going to hold the basin and they'll have to hold it very tightly with the wind. Number twos are going to hold the sieve and then you can take turns. And number three are going to have the clipboards with the sheet. Remember the sheet of, of the mini beast we looked at? How are you going to hold the clipboard in this wind? Is that a good way to do it? Yeah. yeah. Are we going to take turns? And then she'll tick it if she finds, and then we'll take turns with everything. Yes, definitely. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. So, will, so will all the ones come to me and I'll give them a bowl? Please teacher me with the group so please. Are they the same? Yeah. Yeah. No, they're different. How many legs has a crab? Oh, God. Ooh. How many legs? <laughs> How many legs? Eight. Eight. This is a, these are actually called their legs as well, even though they've got the... Kind of pinches. Would well. yeah. that hurt you? Erin, no, not really, but I wouldn't recommend you do it. I have gloves on because my hands just get cold. Excuse me, miss, we found a, another kind of... Um, a shrimpy thing. A shrimpy thing. That's, that's different. That's a prawn. It's different. What see, way... What is, that's a prawn. Look, see, the it's legs are yeah. blue and yellow. Okay. Yeah, that's a prawn. And look, and then, the back is darker. Oh, and he's different. Oh, he's a shrimp. Yeah. And, and the other thing he's is bigger. So you think one is a shrimp and he's kind of got lines on it. So you think they're definitely different? Yeah. Okay. So when we look at the book we look at the description because your descriptions are very good and see does it match the description in the book okay, okay. you're doing very very well okay Thanks. what I'm really impressed with is two things one you're very careful in those rock pools and you're replacing rocks which is terribly important 
and also you're really noticing the way the mini beasts are moving and you're noticing the way you, where, thing, where you're finding things. I'm just going to ask you one question. In general, do you think you found more, more types of mini beasts in the pool where there was lots of seaweed or where there was no seaweed? Hands up. More seaweed. Why would you think that is? Good hiding place, good shelter. Excellent. Now, we're going to be changing and we're going to, I'm going to walk up and when I stop, you're going to go to a new rock pool. Before you do that, I'd like you to change your roles. So the person who has the clipboard now swaps and the bowl swaps and the sieve swaps. <laughs> oh, look at this one. This, it looks like um, something you'd eat like. Yeah, it kind of looks like, you know, that purple lettuce. <laughs> going to the lower shore so we're actually going to go right down by the water's edge so I want you to be very very careful okay here I want you to look for things that are totally different to what you've got in the upper middle shore turn the rocks and look and there's one here I'd like you to see this fella here somebody said it looked like a starfish yeah somebody else said it looked like Somebody said it looked like an octopus. Do you think it's like a brittle star? Is it on your sheet? Yes. yes. Is it like a brittle star? Yes. Yeah. It's a type of starfish. What's different about it to the other starfish? It's more movable. It's right. It's longer. moving more. Any other thing? Anything else about the legs it? Are longer. Are the legs longer? Like flexible. More flexible. Very good. Well, you know, octopus kind of push themselves by their. Or their tentacles. Tentacles. Do they? Yeah. All right. And is he pushing himself by his tentacles? No, I think no. he's just sticking and moving. Oh, he's sticking and moving. Why do you think he slowed down suddenly now? Because he can see anybody. And he's pretending to be yeah. tentacles. That's that's yeah, that's it. and they do that sometimes, don't they? Oh, lots of them. Yeah. 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 found a crab with um, three legs. Really? Yeah. yeah, look, he's there, look. Oh, no, that's one too. <laughs> oh, yeah, what do you think happened to his legs? What I'd, happened? Say, I'd say someone attacked him. Would you? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, look, he's maybe a bird. Blowing someone bubbles. or something. Maybe a bird. A bird. Yeah, do you birds. think it affects oh, them? No, I'd say they go back, do they? I don't know. Don't they? No, look at this. What crab. have you got here? Oh, I found that seaweed. All right. I found it, but it was just about to go hard. Yeah, was it? It was, was it in water or out of water? It was just like on it was the edge. Out of water. Right. It was dry okay. more or less. So the seaweeds you'll find growing a lot of the time right by the seashore it will be red. It kind of looks like salmon, um, you know, salmon. It Colour. does actually. Yeah. What way does it look like salmon? You know the way Colour. salmon kind of has, um, if you cut them up, they have kind of, <laughs> you know, lines. Yeah, lines in yeah. their skin. The, pa the passion of it is very yeah. like a salmon. It's like the bones of it. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. Very good, that's excellent. Miss Harley, look what we found. <laughs> oh, wow, that's amazing. Can you remember where you found it? We found it down by the rocks in the lower shore. The lower shore, fantastic. And what do you think it is? Does it look like anything? I've never have you ever it seen anything like that before. Of it might be it does. Yeah. It? Did you try to identify it in your book? Um, it might be under sea worms, would it? Which section are you going to look it up? Red. Worm. Okay, try it. Be a bit like a sea mouse. We'll read a piece of sea mouse and see if it fits the description, and we'll have sea a look. Sea mouse is the most unlikely looking worm. The short, stout, oval-shaped body is covered with a fur of brownish grey hairs. It's not. It doesn't have hairs. Doesn't it? it okay. Be okay. So you don't think it's a sea mouse? Did you find it somewhere? For that one. That yeah. one. That Do you think it's this one? Yeah. Okay. Can you read a little piece describing it? Flat covered for most of its length by rounded non-overlapping oh. scales. Overlapping right. scales. Overlapping scales. scales. Do you think that's it? It's and it has it there? Yeah, that's definitely. What does it say about colour? Brown. What about habitat? Under rocks and stones on lower shore. On the lower shore, is that yeah, where you found yeah, it? Yeah. Okay. Is a magnet attracted to it? No, but you were right that that was a very good guess because the tap is made of metal, but the magnet wasn't attracted to it. Anybody got any ideas? Why do you think the magnet wasn't attracted to the tap? Actually, it wasn't straightly on the tap. 
Okay, and you think... It was kind of slanted a bit. And do you think you'd be able to put it straight on the tap? Okay, you come over and see if that makes a difference to it. Do you want to try it maybe along the side of the tap? You might get it straighter. You think you have an idea, Robin? What? It might be a different type of metal. It might be a different type of metal. I think that's a very, very good idea. I think you might be right. And we could try the inside of the bin. Why are you going to try the bin, Katie? Um, inside it. Why are you picking inside of the bin? Because it looks like metal. And why won't you pick the outside of it, do you think? Um, because I think it doesn't look like metal. You don't think the outside looks like metal, but the inside does. OK, try the inside of the bin first, and we'll see how you get on, Katie. Turn it sideways, maybe. You might get a better grip. Good girl, you're... Now, we'll hold that up for everybody no, to see. Now! <laughs> everybody sees that Katie was... <laughs> Katie was right. The magnet was attracted to the inside of the bin. Now, Nadine, would you like to try... What do you think about the outside of the bin, Nadine? Would it the magnet be attracted? It sounds metal. It sounds metal. So what do you think would happen with the magnet? It Will the magnet be attracted to it? It might. It might that be. That might be paper over it. And would the magnet work through that, do you think? I don't think so. You don't think so? Well, would you like to come up and try it for me? Mm -hmm. Now, Nadine, can you hold that like it? See, can you hold the whole bin up by the magnet for me? Just hold the magnet. And let... Now, turn around so everybody can see. <laughs> Whose goal is it? Take the magnet and the box. Will it be attracted to the magnet or not? Will be attractive. Why do you think it will be attractive? Because you Okay, so try it and see if you're right. Was your guess right? Was your guess right? My guess. My guess. Yeah. Everyone knows. Was it attractive to the magnet? The paper? No. No, it wasn't attracted. Okay, lift it up there. Oh, very good. The paper clip is attracted to the bolt, even though there's no magnet there. Oh, look at Jamie got the staple. Okay. Could you tell me, Shane, the foil? It was not wrapped to the metal. To the? The, the um, Yeah, you nearly have the word the mag. Magnet. Good man yourself, Shane. It was not attracted to the magnet. Kevin, come out here to me. We won't see. Can you do something for me? Do you think the magnet will work through the plastic. If I put this coin in here, do you think the magnet will work and move the coin out? Do you think so? Yeah. Would you like to have a go for me? Can you get it out? Put it on up? <laughs> so <laughs> oh. What I'm going to do in a moment is we're going to see how many people in this room can get a bulb to light using a battery, one wire, and a bulb. And we'll go on and we'll see, can we find different ways of getting a bulb to light ourselves. Is that OK? Yeah. OK, so all you need to do now is open up the box, just take out the battery, one wire, and the bulb. Keep working away. Okay, that didn't work. Can you try something else now? Try and do it a different. Is there anything else you can do? Can you make it different? Uh, and where's the wire touching? It's touching the, the side the of the bulb. Yeah. And where else is it touching? The bottom of the battery. You have it. Good. Draw a picture of that in the first box, each of you, and then look for the second way to light it. Hold on, I'll put you in one second. You have it as well. Look at what you did. You made a path or a route for the current to flow from the battery through the wire, through the bulb, and back again. OK, can anybody tell me roughly what shape we got when the electricity flows from the battery, through the wire, the bulb, back to the battery again? Ashley, what shape is it roughly? Circle. It's roughly in a circle shape. Now, can anybody tell me in electricity, does anybody know a word that sounds a little bit like circle that describes the path the electricity might take? Yes, Conal? Circus. A circuit, good man. Does anybody know of anywhere we hear the word circuit? Dara? Formula One. Formula One racing. What's the circuit in Formula One racing, Dean? It's like they go around the circle. Right, they go round and around the same piece of track, the cars. So in our circuit in electricity, the current flows 
over and over and over through the same piece of track. Mark, could you come up here for a moment, please, to me? Now, if you go in at that drawing where we've got the bulb on the flat end of the battery and we have the wire, could you trace with your finger the circuit the electricity or the route the electricity takes from the battery to the bulb? Do it with your finger on that one, please, to me. From the battery, yeah? Through the wire. You touch the bulb, then where does it go, Mark? Goes up through the bulb and comes back down. Comes up through the bulb, across the top and back down. Okay, thanks very much, Mark. You can sit down now. Okay, is there anywhere else now you could... No, put it back where it was. Put the bulb back where it was. Now, it doesn't light when you touch the wire up the side. Is there anywhere else you might be able to touch it? What do you think, Katie? Down the... So this time, instead of the wire touching the side of the bulb, it has to touch the bottom of the bulb. Isn't that right? Okay. Did everybody get it to light with the wire flat or the bulb flat on the side? Yeah. Tara. If that's the third way, can you tell me what do you reckon is the fourth way of getting that bulb light? You just turn the battery upside down so the bulb is touching the smaller part. The flat part of the battery, is it? Yeah. Okay, could everybody try that? Turn the battery upside down, put the bulb sideways on the flat part and see can you get it to light. I want you to light the bulb using two wires. It might be easier if you hold the bulb sideways. So you need to use two wires, one at each end, okay? Can you try it again? Do it another way if you can. Do now, just for a second, put your bulb into the bulb holder. Just put the wires underneath the screws and then tighten the screw down. Good boy, you've got it lit there. Leave that light and you've got your circuit made. Well done. I might hold it that. We got the other way to go. How many other ways are there that you could get that bulb to go out? Right, Helen, how many did you come up with? Four. You came up with four ways. Dara, you got six ways. Now we're going to look at things that are conductors and things that are insulators and I'm going to give you out a sheet. Now if we look at the drawing there and we look at our instructions. Will that bulb light? Tara? Yeah. You think the bulb will light? So on your sheet now with your partner see can you guess which ones would be conductors and insulators first? When you're finished your predictions, start making up that circuit there. Naomi, what do you think about a piece of paper? An insulator, insulator. An insula and if it's an insulator, what will happen when you put it between the gap? It won't light. The bulb won't light. Okay, and what about the coin? A uh, conductor. Well, any idea? Why do you think the coin is a conductor? You seem fairly certain. Because uh, it's metal. Because it's made of metal, you think, and that will make it something. Okay, make up your circuit and test them all out when you've made your guesses. Have you tried them out? What have you made, Ashley? The wire you put it onto the other wire and it turns it on, and then when you move it back, it turns off. So, what's that like? Like a switch. It's like, yeah. And why do you think, what happens when it's like that now and the light is on? What's the switch doing? What, it, what have um, you got? A light, a, a circuit. You have yeah. a circuit. And when you move the switch, what happens? You break it. What the do you break? The circuit. You break, and what happens when you break the circuit? What happens to the light? The, the light turns off because there's no electricity going through it. So your switch is on, and what happens to the bulb? It goes on. Why does it go on? 
Because the electricity has gone around. In a what? Circuit. In a circuit. Now, when you turn off the light, turn it off for me there, Clara. What, why is the light gone off now? Because the switch is turned off. The switch is off, but what, is, what have you got in your circuit now? Is there anything between the two drawing pins? No. So what have you done to your circuit? Turn it off. Yeah, okay, you have. You've broken your circuit. Yeah, put a hole in your circuit. You've broken your circuit. Good man. So it's on and off. Well done. Okay, I'm going to ask. Okay, and how does that work? Um, there's a switch at the bottom and you can turn it on and off. And how did you wire it up inside? Um, there's this huge big battery in here and two wires going up to um, this little bulb and two wires going down here to the switch. You can switch it on and off then. Okay Owen, how did you wire this up? Uh, we have a bulb here and that wire we had a coat hanger there. But this this that, is a coat hanger is it? No that, see we had one but that had a film around it so every time that touched it didn't light up. Oh right, okay. And so I got an electric wire there and... There's a piece of an old electric fence or something, yeah, is it? Yeah, And then every time that touches it will make a circuit and that will light up the bulb. Okay. And we had a buzzer <coughs> but uh, it, was, it wasn't as effective as that more sensitive to the touch. Oh right. Yeah. Well I try it. Yeah. See how steady my hand is. Yeah. Are you wired up there? Wired. Are we ready? Yeah. <gasps> oh, look how bright your bulb is. How did you get uh, the bulb so bright? How many batteries have you? We have three uh, 1.5 volt batteries. So how many volts have you all together? Uh, four and a half. Right, so that's why the bulb is so bright. Yeah. If you only had one of those batteries, would the bulb be as bright? No way. Okay. Because I think that's a two-fold bulb or something like that.